building a custom steering and front axle setup in Magnum. And as you guys can see, it's looking awesome. So stay tuned and we're gonna show you guys exactly how to build this system. And holy, does it ever work good. All right, let's get into this build, guys. It's gonna be a good one. All right, look who's back in the shop. It's Big Magnum. And as well as Magnum's been doing, we've been planning some mods for a while. And like, I mean a while, yeah. right? It's been a long time. <laughs> There's lots of different things we're gonna actually be upgrading on this, the front of this mode. As you guys have seen in the previous build series, the whole rear end on this thing is completely custom with a peerless 820 swap into it. And it works really, really well. Phenomenal. Nothing wrong back there. All the stuff we need to be fixing is, Tony, are your tires scared? <laughs> no, they're not. So we're going to be fixing that. And the things we're going to actually be adding into this mower is a completely new front axle. And it's a Sears SS16 model front axle and spindles that's been highly modified. And we're going to be going all over this. So we've got a whole new front axle. We also are using the factory SS spindles because they are some of the nicest spindles you can get. They are so cool and we're going to show you why later on in the series. We got a rack and pinion style steering yeah. set up out of like a go-kart or a golf cart setup. But we used it in next morning and it worked great. We're also going to be upgrading this whole steering system to universal rag joints basically. Mm -hmm. So there will be no gearing or anything like that. We're going to rely on the gearing in the rack and pinion. Along with all that, the rack and pinion needs some new tie rods and we got some really nice M10 uh, tie rods that are just beautiful. They're off of, I think, a Honda 300X or something like that. They're really good. Tony went to the Princess Auto, of course, because you got to go to Princess Auto, yeah. and he picked up a new battery because, uh, well, we've had a couple starting issues with that, and it's not just solely the battery. It's based on a few of the wiring things. So, in this whole build, we're also going to be doing a whole new wiring setup <laughs> on this thing because Magnum's needed Finally. it for a while, <laughs> and uh, Nick's yeah. going to be coming in here and helping out with that. Anyways, let's get right into this build series because this one's going to be awesome. A lot of you guys ask me how to mod your front axle. This is the mod this you would like to do. It's a great mod for any of your guys' off-road mowers. And we're going to be doing it right here, right now on the channel over the next few uh, parts. So let's get right into this build. Magnum, getting it done, finally. All right. Well, Tony's working on disassembling the mower to get it ready for the new parts. I'm working on the new part. I'm working on the front axle first, and the very first thing I'm doing, as I've already worked on the front axle a bit here and installed this uh, 3 16 plate right across the front just to add some strength to it and get rid of this center articulation. We're going to move it up to the top to give us some more flex and a little bit of a lift. Working on the spindles. These are factory spindles, and let me tell you, these are amazing spindles for factory. The SS16 Sears did it well. The Suburbans are awesome. First thing off. You got a threaded spindle for a lock ring with an internal uh, roller pin that goes in that locks into this bolt that goes on top. And then you have a whole cap that goes on the outside that gets threaded into the inside of the spindle. And it's a grease hub that goes over your rim cap. It's amazing. I love it. These things can always be modified even more. And the first thing you need to do to any off-road mower that you're going to be putting big tires on and working on your steering and bagging on it and beating on your spindles and stuff is reinforcing. And that means adding a brace into the spindle right here. This area tends to bend or weaken over time and it can cause some really unneeded issues out on the trail. So what we're going to be doing is I took some tubing here, some 095 wall, or sorry, some 120 wall tubing and I cut it in half and then I'm going to bend these into place and put this right on the back side here so that this reinforces the whole spindle side and it'll be able to weld on the front side, both sides and to each hub side of the spindle. So the lower part of the spindle doesn't need to be touched, the upper doesn't need to be touched on this model. I'm going to have to cut down the actual tie rod ear ends here and we're going to have to reinforce those a bit but we'll get to that later once we actually get it on the mower and figure out where we want to put the tie rods once we get the new rack in. Let's get some more parts going. I know Tony's going to be ripping this thing apart because well I'm sure you that's all you've been thinking about for a long time I'm now. excited <laughs> we've been waiting and planning on it waiting for more time and now it's here and 
I can't wait. Time is now. Next thing to do is actually get the mower lifted up and we're going to use a musty there as an anchor and get the whole front axle, the steering, the whole steering column out and all the gear in there. So we're going to tear all that stuff out. We're going to cut this whole steering post off the side of the mower, finally get rid of that and everything's going to be brand new. Whew. Okay, let's get it all installed and let's get it going. All right, so we got Magnum all strapped up, front tires pulled off. It's time to start ripping out the old front axle, which worked out well. We added these little braces, as you can see in here. Those and were yeah, those, outstanding. Yeah, those work great. And we added these bars in here for steering stops so that the spindles can't steer more than the steering wheel. So these can't go past a certain point. Because when you enter a ditch sometimes, or you're rock crawling, or wheeling, or whatever it is, your spindles will want to steer over. And you'll try and driving over your front axle, and it will just ruin your whole front axle and your articulation spot. So... You gotta fix that by adding those things in there. We've never had a tow at home. That is true, we've never had a tow at home. We've never had a tow at home. And we've, we've trail fixed it, trail we've fix fixed it. it back at the shop. It's worked. If you wanna build a steering setup like this, go for it, it will work. But we're gonna show you how to make a really awesome steering setup and front axle setup on this mower, or maybe yeah. you can replicate it on your mower. All right, so this is what I've been talking about with the bracing. So, fully welded all the way around that piece of half of the tubing there onto the spindle so that we can get nice bead all the way around and that's going to strengthen that up big time never have any issues out on the trails anymore so that's one of the biggest things you guys can do to your own mowers we do it to all of our mowers and then we're also going to reinforce this tab here that the tie rod connects to so we'll get to that further on once we actually get the whole rack and pinion set up that's nice tony's still plugging away here on the front axle and the steering half of it's coming out next we just got to pull out the center articulation bolt and the whole front axle comes out the nice part about this is we we don't just toss these things away that reverser that you guys have seen on the channel is actually made out of a front axle the old ford v front v2 axle might be right here yeah who knows let's see all right let's keep plugging away all right axleless which is a weird word to say but anyways this is one of our first generation uh, off-road lawnmower axles with a lift block and everything so it gives you a lot more articulation it's all gusseted like you guys seen and it worked out great tie rod set up on it. it it did well it will live on in another mower but tony is ready to get his new fresh front axle with lots of nice parts yeah looking nice all the grease nipples I, i'm gonna be able to just walk around I can yeah, grease gun literally to everything. So, Everything's got gonna be grease. Every like rims, spindles, my center articulation point I'm pretty sure is going to have. Yeah, that new fresh fold that we got made there. And of course, yeah, the spindles on the upper half and on the lower half where the actual rim goes on, the rims themselves have mm -hmm. grease nipples. So like I was saying, make this thing easy maintenance. Grease everything in five minutes, not yeah. even. Unreal. Okay, let's keep shredding away. What you doing, Nick? Well, Magnum's getting a new front end set up here, front axle, so we're working on getting the old center articulation set up out of here so that we can get an actual pillow block and a much beefier setup for the also beefier front axle that's going on. So old stuff's got to go, new stuff goes in, upgrade. So the other one sat up a little bit higher as you guys can see in the frame and we're going to be coming below this angle iron piece and welding on a new uh, jig setup. I've actually just been lathing out as you can see the pillow block bearing. I just laid out the center articulation um, for the front axle and I'll make another one of these to sit opposite of this hole on here and then we'll gusset it all. So yes we're going to be moving our center articulation but the other axle when it sat up like this and had the center articulation actually sat up higher, like that, and the spindles themselves were actually longer in this portion. Virtually gonna sit at the same height ride-wise. 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 It's gonna sit at the same height ride-wise as I was saying there, and it should just be all just the same, just looking all new and beefy. A lot of stuff's gotta get cut out, and this whole thing's gotta get laser cut out but we're gonna have to grind it out. Anyways, we're gonna do that at a later date because we've already been making a shit ton of mess with the grinders, so. Anyways, Toe, how was your deuce? Doubt it. Just hopped off the MiG-180 from Eastwood here. 
and uh, it's lights and nice beads here we got the center articulation spot where the bolt slides in the whole portion that hold the whole mechanism that holds the front axle to the actual frame of the long a couple tips for you guys to figure out how to get your uh, center articulation spot in the center now your old uh, lawnmower front axle unless you built it from scratch like i did will have an old center articulation bolt because that's how they all come mostly for the most part anyways you can measure off that or guess above it we kind of do the measure from right above, and then we also measure to the outsides, or the insides of each spindle hole, and to the outsides. And that gives us our exact dead center to our spindles. Then you just gotta make sure it's nice and lined up this way. I usually set up a couple of these guys on there to actually hold it, one on either side to hold it nice and straight. And then I have three guys here with me, me, Tony, and Nick, all the boys here. So I slide the <laughs> bolt in, I put one tack weld in the middle, and then we all look at it about 12 to, I don't know, 30 times. Attack weld it again, and then I weld it all solid, and we call her a day. Anyways, the axle just now needs to get some gussets from here over to nice triangulate the cross member here, or the center articulation spot. Anyways, I'm talking too much, and we need to get this in the lawnmower soon. All right, front axle is not complete, but it's fully gusseted now. I ended up lathing down some solid uh, I think it's three or five eighths bar. Sorry, if we notched it all out to fit in there, welded it all. She's gonna be mint. It's gonna work out great. While I was doing that, the boys have been working hard on the front axle, as we've been talking about. As you can see, that piece I laid down will get not. We notched this out so that can fit right in there. Pillow block bearing on the back. We drilled this hole out to three quarter inch. So. This is going to work absolutely great. As you guys can see, we actually added this little grease tray right here. So I just filed a little slot so that the grease can move down channel to actually grease more things. Unreal. Oh, this is all coming together. Day one is looking great. Axel is in. I'm looking good. Looking good. We still got some gussing to do, but everything's in there and there is no play. We got it stiff right now because we still got some grinding to do to get the axle to slide in. But as you can see, Tony's wiggling it there. And you can see there's no movement Zero in this. Zero play. It is, it is in there. As you guys can see, we have the flange bearing. We got the two bottom bolts and then we're going to get the third bolt in, but we just got it for mock-up purposes. We're going to cut off this bottom side and then the rack and pinion, the whole rack, will sit on the axle underneath. It's going to sit a little lower, but we're not worried. This is going to have plenty of ground clearance. So Incredible. Yeah, so first day worth of work is really, really awesome.